Ladies and gentlemen, you ever have those moments where you hit a uh, you hit a pitch, you hold something, and you're like, I could really fucking do it. And then you spend the next couple of days like Googling YouTube how to sing. And then you're like, you hear someone really sing, and you're like, ah, nah, I ain't, I ain't got it. It ain't in the cards for me. Um, story of my life. Dude, a little bit of singing. I, uh, I can fucking fake my way through a song. You get me on some karaoke, baby? I'll fake my way through that song. I'll give you whatever you want when it comes to karaoke. Spice Girls, if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. You know what's crazy? This just unlocked a core memory. Uh, oh, my God. Poetic justice. I was thinking about this, that my first kiss happened. Uh, and I've done a video about this. I'm sure I've talked about this. My first kiss happened playing spin the bottle for the first time. It was a, uh, just an insane, everybody gets one in their life. And I wasted it at 10 years old where there's a moment in your life where you're like, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, where my first kiss was playing spin the bottle at this girl's pool birthday party, birthday pool party. You decide which is the right way to say that. And I was invited there and uh, I was the only guy and they want to play spin the bottle. Just a crazy situation. And I remember vividly right now that at that pool party, that song was playing If You Want to Be My Lover by Spice Girls. And that, and that literally was the first song that I heard walking into that party. If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. Shout out to the Spice Girls for making that probably happen. Because the girl of the birthday party, she was interested in me. And the Spice Girls just taught her that, hey, if you want to be my lover, then you got to get with my friends. Because that just made my dreams come true as a kid, you know? Isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy also how many songs blow up where the lyrics don't even really make sense? Like, if you want to be my lover, you shouldn't get with my friends. That should be the proper, that should be the proper lyric there. It's quite the opposite of a successful relationship. The, the, the those open relationships, and I'm not knocking, listen, if someone's figured it out, Good for you. But it feels like it just kind of goes against everything. Um, once you start getting into a real relationship. Yeah, um, when you're younger, you're in your early 20s. Hey, maybe you're a, a wild 10-year-old like I was. And it's okay. You can pull it off a little bit. Have some fun. Listen, don't settle down until you're ready to settle down. That's what my grandpappy used to say. He used to say, ain't no pussy like new pussy boy. He didn't call me boy and he didn't say that. He didn't say that. I just need to clear the air uh, and clean up his name. Anyway, uh, when you're young, fucking go buck wild. Do whatever you want. Both sides, boys and girls and anybody else in the LGBTQ, uh, AI, uh, Q, uh, S, uh, 2 plus. No, 2 S plus. Yeah, listen, joke research. I had to Google what was actually involved in the entire acronym. We just be throwing things on there, okay? Uh, we just got to throw things on. I don't, it, we just, it's going to become the whole alphabet. We should just call it the ABCs because it's like all beings community. Literally, the ABCs is the new acronym, the all beings community. But it does feel like those open relationships don't last forever. They're fun, you know, but maybe people pull it off. Swingers. Like, isn't it? It's an interesting thing that there are, is a subgroup of people, barely call them people, that 
are just open swingers. Like, I, I don't think I could do it. You know, it's not for me. I don't know what it is. You could call it my Puerto Rican hot blood. Everybody wants their cake. They're like, yeah, I want to be on the receiving side of an open relationship. But then you're just like, you get in that position. You're like, okay, well, doesn't sound like that with me. You know, I'm going to have a bad time. It's going to be a very awkward uh, car ride home if things start happening. And she's saying things that I've never said. But like, I didn't even know you could hit that fucking sound barrier. You know, just hitting that pitch. I'm like, was a motherfucker a fucking singing coach? You know, it's just a weird car ride home. Anyway, she's like, can you drive me through Del Taco after? She's like, you never want Del Taco after with me, you know, motherfucker. But anyway, the point, and it just feels logistically. After a while, it runs its course. What I'm saying is, it's only for the young kids. I feel like it works out in the long run. Um, maybe they're successful older people. Listen, I've learned becoming an old man that there are so many different walks of life in this world and you got to get in where you fit in and there's room for everybody. That's my philosophy. All right. There's, there's people who only Eskimo kiss with their buttholes. They're out there. You know, somehow some people, they just rub their noses together. Some people just, just rub buttholes together till they get that sound. It's a real smooch. If you can make that sound, rub them. And what are we doing here? This used to be a respectable podcast. We were on our way to get sponsors, but then I start. And we're back to square one. That'd be tight though. I would respect it. If I heard two guys kiss with their buttholes or two females, or even a man and a woman, just, just Eskimo butt kisses. And they did that sound. I'd be like, wait, 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 do that again. I'd want to, it just from a physics standpoint, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to seven minutes in heaven where we just fucking goldfish brain, whatever is going on in the world, whatever is happening. Let's see if we have some topics to get us out of this weird place that we started off. Um, here's something I was thinking. Amber alerts. I don't know how Amber alerts are still coming through my phone. I felt very guilty, okay, turning off Amber Alert notifications on my phone. But le but guess what? W why people abduct kids mainly at night, I'm not sure. But I'm just trying to unwind. Listen, you only have so much rocket fuel and energy that you can give to the world, all right? And at night, I'm either, you know, you know, getting ready to go on stage or I'm unwinding. Okay, maybe I'm playing a little bit of Call of Duty. I'm just vegging out, watching some Jersey Shore, which is like my new shit TV that I've started watching again. You know when you just need white noise? Throw on some Jersey Shore. It's just like cops. It's just like so many like shit TV shows. I love it. But these Amber Alerts come through and I can't help. Listen, I'm a, I'm a storyteller. So when I, start, when I start hearing the descriptions, I start picturing the children. And I feel terrible, but I'm not, I'm not your hero. All right. You're forcing regular citizens to be Batman. Hey, be on the lookout. And they're gotten very graphic to the point that I think they're trying to, to make it real and guilt people into getting their lantern and just going out on patrol. Okay. Because they'll just be like wearing little mermaid pajamas. And I'm like, Oh God damn it. Now you're picturing a little kid wearing mermaid pajamas. Like when she des described the pajamas, it becomes real. But listen, if you really want people to get involved, if we want to start solving some of these crimes with, uh, you know, Amber Alerts, start paying people. Give people awards. Like why don't we have an Amber Alerts, uh, basically Uber app, where you can flick on the app and you can go, oh, there's a white Corolla. Why are they always Corollas? There's a white Corolla uh, went up 20 minutes ago. Uh, it's a, a little girl in um, Little Mermaid pajamas. If they're wearing pajamas of any kind with any Disney uh, characters on them, that's an instant $50. Okay. 
$50 to rescue this little princess. That would incentivize so many people just to get out there, be part of their community. It honestly would be kind of crazy. Like, is that the future of how we do services? Like everything's just going to be so fractured. Cause like, look at the, the taxi community, you know, they like, they had a stranglehold on a uh, share ride or ride share, whatever it is. And then these companies came along and were like, let's just make it, you know, okay for people, the gig economy to be able to get involved on the taxi game. And for a long time, completely just destroyed the taxi community. But here's the thing that I've been hearing is that the taxi community is coming back because they're real professionals. You get some of these Uber drivers, dude, whew, you get some of these Uber drivers and you don't know if you're making it to your destination. It's nuts. Some of the things that are going on, dude, and people delivering packages, dude, I'll have someone throw a package in the air and kick it at my door. And I'm just like, oh, that's cool. That's great. Anyway. But if we start paying people for Amber Alerts, like just put a bounty on it. Let's just do this like we're all living like Star Wars, like the, the Mandalorian, where it's like now, dude, you make me feel like I'm Boba Fett, I'll get the outfit. If you start putting bounty, like and even call it a bounty for an Amber Alert, you don't think 99% of these fucking nerds that go to these Comic-Con or whatever it is, aren't going to just, they have the outfit already. You remember seeing like the... uh I don't know which protest. There's so many weird protests these past couple of years that there was a full, like people were dressing up as the Joker and the Batman. Like there was people with full production value level costumes just out there ready to fight crime and just play the part. How dope would it be if there was bounties and we all had the ability just to wear a costume and go after these bounties? People would think twice about abducting a kid at a playground if they just see a Batman lurking in the corner waiting for it to get a notification. They would just be keeping watch because they'd be like, eventually it would get competitive and they'd be like, I need an edge on this. And they would be at the playground just guarding, you know? And that would become a new market in itself where it's like freelance security. You just keep the kids safe. I think I'm onto something here. Put bounties out for these Amber Alerts. Rewards. We have rewards for lost pets, but not kids. You kidding me? You walk down your street and you see a fucking shih tzu, a little shitty shih tzu. When I see a, a, a little ankle biter dog on a poster, if it's a chihuahua, dude, I hope that shit stays lost. If I find your dog, I'm making sure you're not getting it back, you know? I'm like, oh, you messed up, little friend. You want to bark at me all the time? I've been bit by a few dogs in my life. All of them under 10 inches tall. Okay. That's a lie. I did get bit by a bigger dog, but it was a dog, uh, an older dog with like dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, which is also a weird thing because how do these people know that they just don't have a, a, an old dog? It's very bold for someone to just say their dog has dementia, right? But would the dog tell you? You literally can't find out unless you're paying for dog brain scans, which I doubt. I don't even know if that's a thing. How are you going to know that dog had dementia? But I once went into a friend's house. He was about to go in. I hear his dog going ape shit. And he goes, oh, yeah, whatever you do, don't show fear. Cool. About to walk in here. I don't know what kind of dog this is. You haven't prepped me up until this moment. I'm about to walk through. I walk in. This dog rushes me. And uh, as I'm walking past it, I'm trying to ignore it. Walk past, just bites my hand. Just, just bites it. Just a little warning bite, okay? I didn't break skin or nothing. It was just letting me know I got them things on deck, okay? But let's get back to this because I feel like there's something in here. How do we have rewards for dogs and cats but not for kids? Is that how much we value animals as a society? And listen, here's the thing. Animals, they're over. we're overcrowded with animals. It is crazy, like... We do need to like have people jump through hoops to be able to get animals. Like you should have to take some tests, all right, to be able to just adopt an animal. Like it's crazy. You look at some of these shelters and everything. And granted, uh, I got my dog from a shelter. I'm a hero. You guys don't have to thank me for my service. Uh, dude, when people humble brag about getting dogs from the shelter, I'm like, you just got a clearance dog. It's a thrift store pet, okay? 
Uh, and am I doing bits on you guys now? Yeah, I am. But fuck it. You know, we don't have a guest this week. We're going to have one next week. And that's just what we do sometimes. Okay. Sometimes we're hacky. Sometimes we stuff, we shoehorn uh, jokes into this. All right. Uh, shoehorn is a fun word. Anyway, we need to start. But here's the problem with if you start doing rewards for kids, people are start abducting a kid's. Like they're going to make another sub market out of it where it's like you just steal these kids. You throw them in, I don't know, a basement. You got a little play center down there and you're like, I'm not going to hurt you. This is the best case scenario if you're going to be abducted is to end up in my basement. Okay, because I have snacks. I have a ball pit. Uh, we got Netflix. Uh, have fun. All right. That would be the market. They would just be waiting for people. And then when they get an award, a reward goes up, oh, $300. Cool. They take the kid back. No, I found him just wandering over there in the tunnels, you know? And then they start another sub market where the kids start hiding themselves and they're like working with these abductors, you know? But human trafficking is a real problem. We need to get ahead of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, start paying people for Amber Alerts. That's all I'm trying to say. You want me to get up at 9.30 p.m., okay? Maybe only show it to me when I, when my GPS is open. That would do it. Who has ever gotten an Amber Alert at 9.30 p.m. and started putting their shoes on? Like someone who's just way too much, someone who couldn't make the police academy, but they just still, you know, there's guys out there like that. They still kind of pretend like they're part of the law. Like they get the Amber Alert and then they just be like, gotta go to work, honey. And she's there in her fucking bathrobe. I'll put on a pot of coffee, you know? And like he's lacing up his fucking boots and he sits at the end of the bed and he's just like, <sighs> she's like, you're a good man. You're a good man. Meanwhile, he's just going to drive around town for 30 minutes. Stop at fucking Whataburger. I tell you, no, I'm a real Texan now. Anyway. Um, we were talking about Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore, and this is something from a filmmaking standpoint, is actually an amazing show. It really is phenomenal. It is a time capsule of what I think is the greatest period of time in America. All right. It was peak America, like the tippity top of just the most ridiculous shit before cancel culture, before the, all the wokeness, um, the economy was great and we were just enjoying life. You could still say some ridiculous shit because you watch that show now and when they're talking about grenades and uh, just the the way they were, it was just like, it was beautiful. Just to be living in the free world and having a show like MTV being like, this is good to put out. You know, like that show would never come out the way it is now, um, which is sad. You know, they didn't the, the, do this. The episode where Snooki just gets hit in the face by a man. That is such a crazy moment. Uh, everything's crazy about that show. I Googled it because uh, it's interesting to watch Jersey Shore for the first time when I'm like, I want to say that show came out when I was like 17 or 18. Like I was definitely in uh, call it like I was starting to like party and everything. And I thought it was like the coolest show. And I was like, wow, Ronnie and Sam are fucking crazy. Like everything about the show was crazy. But now watching it like so many years later, having some life experience, I'm like, oh, all of these kids are fucked up. Like you see the insecurities, you see like how toxic at the time I was like, wow, they're just crazy. But it's like, you see like the catalyst and then you see like Ronnie's parents and you're like, oh, this is why he's fucked up. It's crazy. Um, but it is an amazing TV show and it's like the first of its kind. Like, I don't think it was by chance that, uh, Jersey Shore blew up. They... It, what it is, and I think the real world did it differently, but before this show, what reality shows would do was wait around and start filming if things started happening. And then you get reality shows that also start fabricating moments. Uh, let's do this. Let's do that. And I'm sure there was some fuckery on the Jersey Shore. I remember there was like a highlight 
where they basically like refilmed a fight that happened between the roommates where all of a sudden one of their like clothes changed mid fight. There's a very odd thing. Um, I think anyway, but what they did is they recorded for 30 days, 40 cameras, 24 seven. So there was always cameras rolling. Everything was being captured and they didn't fabricate it. What they did is they just waited. They just were filming. So when things did happen, they had cameras rolling. They didn't miss any moments. And it's like what they captured in that show is the in-between moments. Like that's what we love as consumers is, is the moments in between moments is like, that's where the juice is. You know, when you're eating a chicken wing and you like bend it and you see a little crevice of meat, you get that meat. That's where the, that's where the, 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 that's where the juice is, you know? And that's what is like great about the Jersey shore is like those in-between moments, like the, the gym tan laundry that became the biggest thing of that show. When you got the, the cabs are here, that became like the biggest things of the show. Actually in a reality show, if you were really just filming it a regular style where it was like, let's just fabricate and let's build these storylines and like make what we think people want to watch, you wouldn't capture these little like moments that were like authentic within it. The G GTL, the cabs are here, you know, t-shirt time. Those are in between moments, but that's what everybody loves the most is these, these little moments. And they did great at capturing that and deciding this is what the show is. So I commend them. They, they really captured lightning in a bottle. Um, and I'm like waxing poetic about one of the most shit TV shows ever. Uh, but it was amazing. And that's why like, I loved the MTV real world road rules to a point. Because after a while, it got too formulaic. It, it turned into, you could just, they weren't filming enough stuff. They weren't really putting a lot of effort into it. And they were just fabricating all of it. And it was cliche. You were seeing where the story was going. There was a lot of buildup just to get enough television to where people were watching. You could get the sponsors, you know, the commercials people would watch. But then the payoffs would never be enough. With the, with the Jersey Shore, dude, you caught so much shit on camera that it just, it, the story, it was, it was amazing. Granted, I'm only rewatching season one right now. Um, can't turn away. I'm sorry. I can't turn away. And what's also crazy is like Ronnie and Sam are like so in love. The, and then you realize these motherfuckers have only known each other for two weeks and they're already being like this, you know? Do the episode where Ronnie says something about her big toe and she just like, it turns into World War Three. It's the greatest thing ever. It is such a train wreck. I could talk about Jersey Shore all day, okay? We might even change the name of this podcast just to talk about it more. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, speaking of weird TV shows, uh, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up. Listen, we'll touch... A little bit on the Ring of Power. The Ring of Power, Lord of the Rings, the Ring of Power, getting a lot of hate. And it was like weirdly hate bombed in the reviews. It's a masterpiece of a show. Great storyline. The story in itself, the canon of Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, one of the greatest stories we've ever had. The Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Rings, uh, the Two Towers, uh, Return of the King. Those are phenomenal books. Okay. The Hobbit was great. I even love the movie. All right. Everybody, uh, hated on the movies. It was great. All right. It was yet that yet to see what it was. You know, the Hobbit was almost like a kid's book. The, the Lord of the Rings is like for young adults and, uh, the Sil Silmarion, that's for like, that's the real shit, which is the next book I'm going to start, which is like the previous thing uh, before The Hobbit. It was like the second age. Dude, I'm nerding out. I'm one of the Comic-Con dorks that I talked about earlier. I'm going to dress up, dude. If I was going after Amber Alerts, you best believe I'm dressing up as Gandalf and getting out in them streets. Okay. 
I'm going to, and I'm going to have so many little quick quips ready. I'm going to have a little, you shall not pass. And then like put my fucking staff in front of their car and be like, get out of here, pajamas, you know? But the show is great. And the season finished amazing. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you have Amazon prime and if you don't stop listening to the podcast, um, watch it, watch the show, but house of dragons, this is a great show. We're about to come up on the finale and there's been a, there's been a lot of hate thrown its way for a few different reasons. They've, you got to look at the story of what they're trying to do. They're trying to stuff a lot of story into one season. And in doing so, they've done a lot of time jumps, which is very odd. They should have kind of held everybody's hand a little more while they were doing these time jumps because the episodes would start and there'd just be a new character. And you're like, well, which one is this? And then it was like a weird moment. You're thinking about it too much. It's a little distracting. Maybe do the time jumps over one season, but they, you know, when season one finishes, do another time jump, build the story more. But apparently they have a four season arc that they're going to go with. I think that's what I read. So they're like, we have to do these time jumps earlier to get to the bigger chunk of the story. Hey, if you have a great show, maybe don't limit it to four seasons. But I also respect it. I also respect it because I do like when shows know where the meat and potatoes of a show is and they don't write themselves into a corner and then just start bleeding out like the fucking Walking Dead, you pieces of shit. You took The Walking Dead. Season two is one of the greatest seasons of any television show. And you guys were just like, let's just keep kicking the can. Let's start killing off all the main characters. And uh, that's, yeah, we're just going to keep ruining this with the same shit over and over again. That's what The Walking Dead done. That's what The Walking Dead done. That's what it done to me. But what I would have liked to see is kind of what um, the Ozarks did, is they put a bow on the show. They said, listen, we could keep extending this TV show, but we don't want to. We're going to, we're going to wrap this up. And we're going to make, we're going to, we're going to leave on a high note. I don't know if I agree with the, with the note that they left on with the, with the Ozarks, I don't want to spoil it, but I don't like the way some characters left and some characters stayed. But the point I'm making is House of Dragons. It's a good show. And uh, it's kind of crazy when incest is like starting to become celebrated. Like they can make a take a character. And if you haven't been watching the show, I don't know if I want to spoil this, but there's just like weird incest stuff happening and then for some reason people forget real quick because women are like drooling over this guy granted he's a cool fucking character but then it's just like are we forgetting that this is this is a very weird situation i don't know what else to say uh but it's just odd that aspect of the show um i like the show i think it's great i haven't forgiven what game of thrones did I kind of wish Game of Thrones would continue on. Like instead of doing all of this stuff, let's catch back up with the characters in Game of Thrones. Let's let's write that wrong, okay? Let's bring Daenerys back and uh, just keep it rocking. This is the last thing we'll talk about, ladies and gentlemen, because it's going to get the episode flagged. For sure. For sure. The Boston, uh, these Boston scientists... Let me pull up this article. Have created a COVID strain that is killing 80% of their mites. So, the Boston University claims to have produced a new COVID strain with 80% kill rate. And they've been testing this on mice. And... My only question, why, why are we even doing COVID shit anymore? Let it go. Like, do we, are we pretending like we don't know how this all happened? Like, are we now, remember rules of pangolin? Remember when we were blaming poor pangolins and bats in the forest? 
we all like, but then it came out about so much stuff with Fauci and it's kind of crazy. Everything in the beginning of the pandy was talking about uh, these fringe conspiracy, the COVID, the Wuhan COVID lab, Fauci, all this stuff. It was made in a lab and blah, blah. You don't need a mask. You do need a mask. Like all this crazy shit. Everything that's been said at the beginning of the pandemic that was like conspiracy has turned out to be completely true and even like becoming part of the narrative. Places in Florida, or actually I want to say this whole state of Florida, they're recommending that young adults don't get the vaccine because we're seeing increases in uh, heart inflammation in young men. This is stuff that people were saying a while ago and everybody is over here fucking be a hero, you know, fuck out of my face with that. But with this lab stuff, I'm like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why are we testing this on mice? Are the, are the mice wearing masks? Hmm? But it is crazy. Omicron S. So researchers knows that the mice reacted differently to the original strain than to the new one, which was mild on mammals. But the new strain, Omicron S, attacked all the mice and killed 80% of them, they wrote in their uh, the reports. They're researching the COVID strain extracted protein from the Omicron strain. Um, now, I don't know. To be fair, are they... Are they... Uh, okay. This study, but it has not gone down well with medical experts and scientists. Professor Shamul Shapira, a leading scientist with the Israeli government, warned the scientists at the Boston University not to play with fire and indulge in manipulated viruses, uh, research that peers haven't monitored. So they're just doing this stuff. They're basically playing around with the variants and creating their own super COVID. That's cool. I mean, what could go wrong, you know? What could go wrong in the world, ladies and gentlemen? What are we what are we doing here? We should have amber alerts for the scientists in Boston. Like when there should be an amber alert system for when people start doing dumb shit where it's just like <clears throat> you like get a notice on your phone and you're like, "Oh, my friend is about to text his ex that completely ruined his life. She cheated on him and he she's a, he's about to text her back and then you can actually do something about it." It's about some crazy girl named Amber. You know, that's, that's what it is. The Amber alert is you're like, oh no, he's going to text Amber. And then you got to go get your boy and drive him through the Whataburger drive through That's how you, that's how you talk to someone. You take them through the Whataburger drive through if you really want to get through to them, because you're not going to go anywhere for 45 minutes. If you're in Texas, you understand what I'm saying. All right. That's another conspiracy. Why are the Whataburger drive through lines so long? Okay. It's almost like the Whataburger is all anybody eats at night. Doesn't make any sense. There's plenty of restaurants, but only the lines are at Whataburger. Now, is that a reflection of how fast the Whataburger service is? Or is it a reflection of the demand of Whataburger? Either way, something has to happen. And they keep making new Whataburger locations, and the Whataburger just keeps having a line. I don't know what it is. And listen, I'll be honest with y'all. The Whataburger fries, not that good. Okay, I had a uh, hatch pepper chili burger from there. Delicious. It was amazing. Um, I've only eaten Whataburger twice. Second time was so-so. Did I have to wait about 30 minutes in the line and then wait another 30 minutes outside of Whataburger? Yeah, I don't know what's going on in there. I don't know what uh, you're doing with my burger. No stupid ladies and gentlemen. But listen... Thank you for listening to this episode. We jumped all over the place on this episode, and I won't apologize for it because I feel like we got into some real shit. We're creating a new business, you and I together. The Amber Alert system uh, with bounties. The Bounty Amber Alert business is what we're going to call ourselves. The BAB. The Bounty Amber Alert business. All right? Someone trademarked that for me. The BAB. All right, we're, we're going to start creating bounties. It's going to be just like Uber, and we're going to fight crime. All right, that would be dope. You just, honestly, I'm going to do it. Me and Elon Musk. Okay, that fucking dork. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for being so good to the guests that we have on the podcast. 
Uh, we're going to have another guest next week. We're going to, we're experimenting with doing one and one. Okay. One for me, one for the guests. All right. I don't know which one you guys are enjoying more, but ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being along on the ride. All right. And remember, oh yeah, go like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. We're going to be putting out more content and focusing on building our YouTube because Instagram keeps playing with your boy. I don't know if you've noticed it, but your boy has gotten reported a couple times, stories taken down, posts taken down uh, for bullying, harassment, inciting violence. And it's like the dumbest shit. And then my engagement drops from like, it goes down to like basically like five to 10% uh, of the people that used to engage with it. So it's like dwindling. So I'm like, I need to invest in a different platform. That's going to, you know, give me longevity. Uh, so if you haven't liked, comment, subscribe, if you're not on YouTube, I keep saying that like, this is the early 2000s. Hey guys, like comment, subscribe. Uh, if you aren't subscribed to YouTube, please go over and do so. And remember no matter what, I still love you.